Hey gang, Rod here at East Coast Lumberjack. And this week, on our video, we are going to talk about chopping wood. So we've done all kinds on axes, on handles, how to sharpen axes, how to hang axes. Now I'm gonna do how to use axes. Um, two weeks ago was at the UMB Woodsman's Competition. Um, actually, I guess it was just last weekend. And watched a lot of the students here competing and saw some dangerous stuff. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you how to use an axe. How do we chop a tree down using an axe? So we're going to use a block of wood here to simulate a standing tree because it saves killing a tree. <laughs> um, get a lot more chopped out of a block of wood like this. Um, this is also how we typically compete. So for those that haven't uh, gotten to know the East Coast Lumberjack yet, I am a, a Lumberjack competitor. Um, I've competed in the Steel Timber Sports Series. I competed, uh, I started actually back at UNB uh, 35 years ago is when I started swinging an axe like this. And felling trees, uh, stand, this we call the standing block chop or chopping a tree down. So what I'm going to teach you today is universal. Okay, you can use it if you just have a little Walter's axe and you want to cut a tree down that's along a trail. Whatever you want to do, the things I'm going to talk to you about are universal. You can use it for all of them. So, we're going to simulate <clears throat> chopping a tree down with this block of wood. And I'm going to use my uh, Aussie Speed Axe. And it is just a, quite an axe. I know for a lot of you people, they, uh, usually <clears throat> they've got an old beater or something. You know, you may be using something like this. No, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing for all of them. You're just going to take a few more swings with this than you do with this. And of course, giving them 57 now, the fewer swings, the better. So a few basic things. Okay, a few basic things. Now, some of the, some of the uh, cardinal mistakes that people make when they're using an axe. Okay. When we're chopping a block of wood, the shortest distance to get to the middle of the wood is straight in. But we know if we hit a block straight in, we get about this much penetration, okay? So not much. So as we start putting an angle on that axe, it penetrates into the wood deeper every time we go up. And if we go too steep, it actually it penetrates pretty nicely, but of course, it's probably about the same distance. If I'm going too steep, I maybe come in here four inches this way, but I'm still only going to be in about an inch. So there's an optimum angle for an axe to strike a log, and that angle is 45 degrees. Okay, universal, 45 degrees. So because of that, because it's 45 degrees, two seconds, the other thing we do when we're chopping competitively, we draw lines on. And we want to basically follow those lines. So for all you college students out there, listen up because I'm going to show you and, and explain to you how we draw our block, Okay, how we draw our lines on. So the first thing we do, we divide the block in half. Okay, so we divide it in half on the top one way and then half the other. Okay, so we've quartered the block and then we draw those lines down the wood. Okay, down the wood here. And I'll do that the whole way around the block. Okay. Now, the next thing we do, the first swing, and one of the, one of the biggest mistakes I saw people making at the UMB competition is their first swing was down. Lumberjacks, your first swing is never down. Your first swing is always up. It's far safer. Okay, it's a far safer uh, swing. And if you watch all the pros, you will never see a pro swing uh, down on his first swing. And there's a reason for that. There's lots of reasons for that. So we quarter our block. The first swing up, typically when you're swinging an ax, and it's very natural, very, uh, it feels natural. Your ax is going to hit at what we call groin height. Okay, so right where your inseam is, that's where your line is going to be. Okay, that's always the first swing on your block. Okay, your first swing in your block is always going to be there. Now, we know 45 degrees is the optimum angle, so how do we draw this block out? So what we'll do, this block here is about an 8 inch block, so we're going to open 9 inches wide. Okay, so there's 8, so we're going to open 9 inches. So that's going to be my cutting face. And the reason for that is because when we go around to the back, we're going to chop a little bit higher. 
because what we want to do to sever a block, we're going to chop in from the bottom on the front, from the top on the back, and once those lines cross, the block will come clear. Okay, they don't have to meet perfect. As long as they crisscross one another, wherever that happens, the block will sever because, of course, that's lengthwise in your grain and it's very weak, it'll break off. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is find out where the halfway mark is, where the middle of this is, and that's going to be here on my, sorry, on this line here. So I would measure that, measure halfway, and then measure from here down, come around here to my next line, and measure right to there. So that's my halfway line. So I'm going to bring a 45 degree angle up here and a 45 degree angle down here. And when I do that, there's about a two inch gap between my top line and my bottom line on the side here. Okay, so I do the same thing on this side, 45 here, 45 here. So that's my front face. So however far I'm down on this, if it say that looks like it's about eight inches, I'll come down only six inches in the back because I want that line to be higher than my front because when I come down at a 45 degree here, it's gonna overlap with this bottom one. Actually doesn't meet perfect. It's about two and a half, three inches higher. But I want to cut in, when I clean this wood out, I wanna be chopping my ax into that cleaned out face. So I'm chopping into open wood. That will make it come clean very easily. Okay, and then I'll draw my same nine inch line down from the top of this one, nine inch here at the bottom, and then it comes up at a 45 degree angle on both sides. So that's quick and dirty how you draw your lines. Okay, so we always start with your first swing, your bottom swing first on your front side, and that's always groin height. Okay, I think my inseam's 34 inches, so you can measure from the ground, it'll be up 34 inches. That's my bottom line. Open up as wide as your block is, so if you guys are chopping eight by eight or whatever you're chopping, you wanna open an inch or more. If your lines, if you step in a lot, if you cannot follow your lines cleanly, open up 10 inches, okay? Open up a little bit wider so that if you step in, you're still not gonna, what we call wooding yourself. You're not gonna to come to a V before you meet your halfway line, okay? So nine inches up, draw your 45 degrees both ways <clears throat> to your halfway line, come around to the back and step up an inch or two and draw the same face, okay? You're gonna be nine inches apart on my back and of course my line's going in at 45 degrees. Okay, so that's how you draw your lines. If you're out in the woods and you're gonna fell a tree down at your camp, you wanna use your ax, it's the same basic thing. Draw your line on, on the bark, <clears throat> where your inseam is. Look at how big the tree is. Open up a little bit wider than that. If you have a really big tree and you've got to open wide, a lot of times that chip, because it's so long, won't come out. And we've had this happen when we chop uh, butcher blocks out in the west coast of BC. I've been out there competing at uh, Squamish. It's a phenomenal show if you've ever Never been there, competitors, you want to get there. Squamish is a grand daddy of lumberjack shows here in Canada. And what we'll do if it's really large is we'll do it in two steps. We'll make a smaller notch like this so the chips come out. And then, of course, you go up to the, if it's a 24-inch cottonwood, you're going to open almost, what, 18 inches or so. It might not be quite as wide. But you'll come in there at uh, 10 inches first to get that chip out. Then you'll go up to your full face and take that out. So if you've got a big tree at the camp, do it in stages like that. Take your smaller chip out first and then jump up to your bigger chip and, and then work it the whole way into your, till you get to your halfway point. So, some other things. So the first thing is your first swing is always up. The second most common thing, and I saw it a lot at uh, UNB, is guys are what I call baseballing, okay? You do not swing an ax like you swing a baseball bat, okay? That, very, very straight ahead. Baseball bat is from the shoulder and it's around like this. When we swing in the standing, what we call the standing block chop or felling a tree, you go in circles, half circles and full circles, half circles and full circles. And that's the best way to come in at a 45 degree angle. So to do that, the next thing we're gonna talk about is foot placement, because that is what keeps you from cutting your leg. When you look at your block, usually in the professional world, we have we chop a rounded block, 
And this tip comes from Dave Bolstead, who was uh, the only man to ever win all six Steel Timber Sports uh, events at a World Championship. Dave's uh, left us, unfortunately. Great guy, great competitor. But he would always tell you, when you see your, your front face line, you want to stand with your back foot so you can see an inch past it. So an inch of wood past this center line. That's what tells you where this foot's right. So if I'm back here, I can't see anything past it. I'm about a half inch. Right here, I can see an inch past that line. Okay, so there's an inch of wood sticking out past that line. So this is where my back foot should be. My front foot is going to be right in line with my halfway line. So if my axe glances by mistake, it's coming in here. Okay, it's not going to go anywhere else. I'm kind of dumb, Cumberland. Beat up my axe on my dog. <clears throat> okay, so if, if you glance, when you're like this here, the axe is going to come down and come between your legs. Okay, so that's rule number two, foot placement. Number three, on presenting the axe to the wood. What you want to do, because our first swing is always going to be up, you want to drop your right shoulder. If you're swinging the other way, you're going to drop your left shoulder. So we're going to drop this shoulder down. Okay, so we're going to kink our, our leg a little bit, but the biggest thing is dropping that shoulder, because that puts your shoulders at a 45 degree angle. And if your shoulders are at a 45 degree, your axe is going to be at 45 degrees when it comes into the wood. Okay, so see this one here? The axe comes very close to the ground. So really all you're doing is dropping the axe and it naturally comes down past your foot. That's a motion. It's a half circle. See that? Half circle. Your top swing is a full circle. Okay, your hand drops down, swings around, your axe goes in a full circle. Half circle for bottom swings, full circle for top swings. Okay, we see that? Half circles and full circles. And you it feels, you feel like you're really over exaggerating the swing. But you need to do that because once somebody says go, you will always shortchange your swing. You want to try to keep your swing as pure as possible because this is all about physics and math. Okay, some guys like to muscle the, the, the axe in, and I know some guys that are really strong, like uh, I think a Nate Hodges. He's one I know chops really fast and really powerful. He's got a lot of strength. In really big wood, sometimes that plays against you. What you need to do to get the most power, now, and again, <laughs> there's so many things to talk about. Axe chopping is all about balancing speed and power. Okay, the faster you chop, the less power you have. And of course, the slower you chop, if you really focus on it, you can gain a lot of power, but you're going to lack. You're not going to chop through the wood as fast because you've lost speed. So you're always trying to balance the amount of power you have with the speed that you swing. Now, for all you newbies, just starting out in this thing, don't worry, you're going to walk, crawl before you walk, walk before you run. So first you get good, then you get fast. Okay, so one take home message I give to all collegiate choppers, take your time. Make your hits, hit where they're supposed to, work on your accuracy and your power. The speed will come as you get better. Okay, that's, that's a really good tip for, for uh, new, new choppers. So now the next thing we're going to talk about is a pattern. When we're chopping a block like this, some people hit all over the place. You want to chop in a pattern. And there's a reason for that. And the other reason is what I saw at the University of New Brunswick uh, Woodsman's competition, the I think it's 42nd annual. Um, I saw a guy bust his handle. And what happened was he was just kind of chopping willy-nilly. And because he was, he took more wood out on his far side than on his near side. So his near wood was still here. Well, what happens is when you swing over here to this far wood, and there's a bunch of wood here, you're going to hit your handle. And the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to bust a really good handle. Now, I'm in the axe handle business. Nothing I like more than making handles and selling them to you. But I don't like to see people break handles needlessly. And the other thing is, if you're chopping like that, you're not going to be efficient getting your, getting your block off. So, we'll think of four quadra quadrants on this block. From the center line on my side, uh, bottom, my side, <coughs> close to me, near wood, I guess we'd call, on the top, far wood on the top, 
firewood on the bottom. So we're going to chop in a pattern. One, two, three, four, and we're going to continue around in this pattern. Okay, even if you're using a Walters or a double bitter or whatever you're using to chop a tree down in the woods, use the same pattern. Now on this log here, because it's only eight inch, I will start opening with a one in the center here, a one in the center here, and then I'm going to go to my pattern. One here, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to keep going in that pattern till I get almost to the center of my block. When I get almost to the center of my block, the last two swings you make are your two up, what we call drivers. They're on your power side and on the front on standing block. It's always for anyone, whether you're left-handed, right-handed, whether you're a guy or a girl, doesn't matter what you are, your last two swings before you go to the other side is one up on the near wood, one up on the far wood. If it's a small block, if it's a larger block, you're going to put three up. Okay, one near, near, one center, one far. Then you travel with your axe around the block. Don't back around the block, which I've seen some collegiate kids do. Go around this way. Okay, now you may have seen my young fella, um, Benjamin. My boys have both been on Team Canada. They've both been anchor men, um, chopping the standing block chop. Very proud of them. And one year, uh, a couple years ago, <laughs> if you've ever seen the guy that went down and kissed the deck, it was my son Ben. He just left on Saturday for the Worlds again. He's heading over to uh, the World Championships uh, for Steel Timber Sports. He'll be in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden. You can YouTube it and watch it this Friday. It's going to be live, actually. So he'll be there. Ben went around frontwards. His foot caught on a chip, and down he went. Got up, still chopped in 14 seconds. It was pretty impressive. He's an impressive chopper. <clears throat> so putting all this together again, I know it's a lot. But we're going to, I told you how to draw your block out. I told you about your angle. It's going to be 45 degrees. I told you about the pattern. I told you about dropping your shoulder for your upswing, standing up for your downswing. So now we're going to put it all together. Okay. And you can practice this even with just a, a simple handle without a head on the end of it. And just keep practicing your, your upswings with your shoulder down and then your downswing standing up. Okay, so let's put this all together in a chop, because I know we're getting a little bit long. Okay, so here we go, front side of an 8-inch log. So there's my first two. Now I have a corner here, a corner here, a corner here, and a corner here. And that's where my next four, all my next swings are going to go. Okay, so there's six, seven, eight, nine. Now your drivers. One up near, and see this here? We call it hanging the axe or cutting your corners. You want some of the axe, and on a small log like this, I probably should have had this much hanging out because you can penetrate a lot deeper. If you're only driving half the axe in, you can drive it that much further. So one near, one far, that's a good driver there. And then we're going to take our axe out and come around to the back side. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same pattern in the back, only my drivers in the back are coming down. Now I want to show you up close here. This is what it looks like from the side. So this is my halfway line right here. Okay, and you can see I'm over half. I've cleaned all this out. So now here's my line on this side. You can see this line here. When I go to drive this off, I'm driving out here into open wood. See, there's no wood in here. So when I drive that off, it's gonna, I'm gonna drive into this open wood. So it, it jumps off of there really cleanly. Okay, so it's a little bit higher in the back. It's only six inches down. Same 45 degrees. Okay, and now it's gonna dry, it's gonna fly off of there. So let's see what it looks like. This is the back side.
Now I know I'm almost there. So now what I'm gonna do is do two more drivers to take it off. And you always, when you're driving this off, break your close wood, your near wood first. Always. So there, see my ax? You can even see it's through here. So that's my near wood broken. And off it comes. Okay, picture perfect. Thankfully, it all went well. But that's, uh, that's how we do the standing block or felling a tree. And you can see here, once you have done it a number of times, your lines are all a little bit of a step there, missed stroke. But that face there is pretty, is pretty clean. Okay, the back side, same thing. Get into a knot, but thankfully I was high enough I could get right around it. Okay. So that's felling a tree 101. Um, there's a lot of stuff there. We're going to come back. Uh, next week I'll likely do the underhand chop, and we'll do the springboard chop. But I'm going to start posting uh, a lot of stuff on training and how to get good at, at chopping wood. All right, so the East Coast Lumberjack signing off till next week. Take care.